Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe, stay up to date with all the latest content. Now, if you want help with your training business, then make sure you reach out to me. There's a number of ways you can get in contact with me to get more help with your business. Visit the description below uh, this video. There's a number of ways that we can help you and your business to grow and scale and get to the next level, right? You can either book a free 15 to 20 minute call with me where we jump on Zoom. I can ask you a couple of questions with regards to your business, see where you're currently at, see where you want to get to and show you some actionable steps to take this week to grow and scale. Now, if you don't want to do that, then you can also send me questions to either my email or you can connect with me through WhatsApp. All right, all the information is below, so don't stay stuck with your business. Get in contact with me today. All right, so today I want to talk about what makes a great soccer trainer. So for those that have been following my channel for a while now, right, a lot of you will know that I am more in the, well, I, I specialize more in the soccer niche, and most of the clients that I work with are soccer trainers. Okay, we do have also coaches in other sports as well, but I predominantly specialize more and focus more on the uh, soccer uh, training niche. So I want to come on here and share, you, share with you a few things that I have learned myself through training and also that working with very successful coaches, a, a couple of traits, a couple of key things that most of the great trainers out there are doing that are helping them to succeed in this industry. So today is not really about business specific things. It's more about the, the coaching side of your business, which in the long term does affect the growth and sustainability of your business. Because if your, if your service, if your product isn't great, then the likelihood that clients and customers stay with you for long term will begin to suffer, right? So what we want to do is we want to become a great trainer so we can help our clients to get results, get to the next level, and then stay in our program for longer so we don't have to go and look for clients consistently. And hopefully those clients that stick with us, they love what we do, they love our training, they're getting great results, refer other like-minded uh, clients and customers into your program as well. Okay, so from working with really successful trainers, there's a couple of things that I've taken from them, right? And I want to share with you today, all right? So number one is expertise and knowledge, right? All the most successful, all the great trainers out there are all experts and they all have a massive amount of knowledge in the fit in the field of soccer and soccer training, right? So if you want to become a great trainer, right, you've got to become an expert, right? And how do you become an expert? You become an expert by reading, uh, reading, researching, doing, implementing, right? And studying different trainers in your industry. Okay, so I remember when I first started, like most trainers out there in, in the world of soccer, I started off as a volunteer coach. And what then started to happen is as I started to progress up the, uh, up the ladder, then I went from a volunteer into a paid role. But in order to get from a volunteer role into a paid role, I needed to become some type of expert, build my knowledge. And how do I, how did I build my knowledge? I went on to courses. I observed training sessions. I went to watch a youth soccer matches on the weekend, right? I consumed as much information and as much knowledge of the game as possible so that I can then implement and get great results with the players that I was working with, okay? Now, the second one is effective communication, right? So to become a great soccer trainer, you need to become an 
effective communication. Now, what does that mean by becoming an effective communication communicator? Right. In business terms, this means being effective with the communication you're having with your customers. Right. So away from the field, how are you communicating with them on a regular basis? Are you sending out email marketing? Are you uploading content on YouTube, YouTube or Instagram or Facebook? Are you sending out regular messaging so that that communication becomes clear of who you want to work with. Okay. And this is something we teach trainers in our program is when, when you create content online to try and attract other like-minded parents or or players into your program, right? Making sure that you're, you're clear in your messaging, who you want to work with, what, what problem you're trying to solve for the person watching and consuming your content. Right. Also, effective communicator can also be a motivator. Right. Are you a person that motivates your clients to continue to train and work hard? Right now, personally, myself, I've kind of shifted away from this whole motivation thing. And one of the reasons is because I, I believe that motivation is something that you can't teach someone. Right. Motivation is within us. If you aren't motivated within you, then ultimately you can't get to the next level. You can't succeed. You can't progress. Right. Because as a coach and something I've learned is that you can't motivate someone to do something that that motivation has to come within. Right. I'll take a a fantastic example, which is the best player in the world. uh, Messi. Right. No one is motivating him to continue to play on, to continue to do well, to continue to succeed. It all comes within him and his personal motivation. What's his drive? Right. So, yes, you can motivate players during sessions and during conversations, but ultimately motivation has to come within the player, right, within your clients. Now, a way that you can become a motivator is obviously just becoming a really positive role model for them. And that comes back to being an effective communicator. How do you communicate with your players, with your parents? Right? Are you a role model? Okay, when parents are following you on, on Instagram, on Facebook, are you that person that is motivating, encouraging them to, you know, to live a healthy lifestyle, to get out there, to train, work hard? stay disciplined or are you the person that uploads videos of you going out drinking getting drunk uh, doing drugs right doing stuff that doesn't align with the messaging you're trying to portray to your players and, and customers okay now the third one is adaptability right all the great trainers out there are adaptable and what do i mean by adaptable in the world of of business and especially this type of industry, adapti- adaptability means being able to adapt to different types of players. So at some point, you are going to have players which are at a really high level. You're going to have players that are maybe in the middle and you're going to have beginner players. Uh, being adaptable means that you're, you're, you're flexible in how you work with different types of players. Okay, so some pl- the players that are at the beginning phases of training, right? They're going to need a certain type of coaching, which is going to help them to get to the top. The players at the top, they require something different than the players at the bottom, right? So are you adaptable? Can you work with different age groups? Can you work with different ability levels? And can you adapt to certain players and situations within within a training environment? Now, in terms of business, Adaptive, adaptability, it's a big word for me, uh, could be things, things that happen that, that aren't in your control. Like, for example, the pandemic, right? The pandemic was a big blow for a lot of trainers out there, but some trainers adapted by going online and carrying on training their clients via Zoom and online platforms. Other trainers didn't adapt and they quit on their clients, 
And they said, right, we won't see each other until the pandemic is over. But the pandemic lasted one, two years. And then ultimately, when they wanted to connect with those, those clients again, those clients had gone to someone else. Right, so adaptability, adapting to, to different environments, different times, different situations, different players. Right, adaptability is what makes great trainers. Right, and the fourth one is, I believe, the most important, and that is leadership. Right, leadership skills. Being a leader of your program, being a leader of the class, class clients and customers that you work with, and being a leader not just in good times but bad times as well so if your clients are struggling to get results are you that leader that just or are you that type of person that just quits on them because they're not getting the results you want or are you the the leader that stands up and works with that player closely to make sure that you get the results with them okay so that is leadership inspiration decision making you know, and also setting standards with the clients that you bring in, right? And not just bringing in any type of, of client, but bringing in clients that meet your training philosophy, that meet your business standards, right? And who you believe are a good fit to work with, right? The best trainers out there are the ones that filter out bad customers. They're the ones that make their their onboarding process so hard that the ones that aren't committed, they just end up and leave. The ones that want to get the help and stay in the program, commit for longer, are the ones that go through the process. Okay, so don't get stuck with your business, right? Now, if you want more help, reach out to me again. This video could have gone on for hours, right? I have a lot of other different different points that I could have made in this video, but I wanted to keep it relatively short. So if you want to become a great trainer, if you want to become a great business owner, okay, reach out to me. A number of ways you can do that, visit the description below. You can get my one-on-one -on -one help by either booking a free uh, 15 to 20 minute Zoom call, or you can simply send me a question to either my email or my WhatsApp. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.